For Practice Update, I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with Dr. Roy Herbst, Ensign Professor of Medicine and Chief of Medical Oncology at Yale Cancer Center and Smilo Cancer Hospital in New Haven, Connecticut. Dr. Herbst, thank you for joining me today. Uh, thank you for having me. Well, I want to end with asking you some of your big takeaways from ASCO 2016 and how it will affect your practice. What will be practice changing for you, something that you would incorporate into your own practice? Right. Well, I, I think, you know, one thing that, that we're seeing is precision medicine takes charge. We've known that for a long time. In fact, it's four years now since I set up a precision medicine tumor board at Yale, meaning that we don't look at tumors just by where they're from, but we look at them by molecular characteristics. But there are two or three abstracts here that I'm struck by that are looking at large groups of patients, thousands of patients, profiling those patients, and then um, putting them on different drugs. I was struck by one trial uh, where patients are profiled, and then drugs that are already approved for one indication are now being used in other indications based on a molecular profile, whether it be a hedgehog inhibitor, you know, Herceptin in, in some cases. And, and what we're seeing is that if you find the right patient and you treat them with the right drug, it's going to make a difference. So I think my, my, my thought now is how do we get this now to more people? How do we find a way that we're going to be able to match more patients to drugs? Uh, our lung master protocol that I mentioned is, is one way of doing it. Uh, the TAPOR trial is another. And now hopefully there'll be uh, many more options as more and more dr drugs get approved. There have been 30 plus drugs approved in the last year by my count. So it's really an exciting time. The second message is immunotherapy is here to stay. You know, it's funny, I mean, it sort of snuck in about three, four years ago. And now, of course, everyone's an immunologist. I'll tell you, most of the immunology that we're studying wasn't available when I went to medical sure. school. Absolutely. So I think we have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. uh, you want creative oncologists. You want the ability to combine drugs. My sense is that's all well and good, but there's a session, the session on com combinations suggests we need science. We need to understand why patients are resistant and then make rational combinations. And I think that's where a place like mine, where we have science to the lab and the lab back to the clinic, we really have to start to investigate as much as possible why patients respond, but more importantly, why they don't. Uh, but I think the, the future is very bright. And, and then, of course, we're moving towards cell therapies yes. and vaccines. And I would say, you know, what's, what, what's, what's exciting now, in a few years, I think we're going to be making personalized vaccines and, mm -hmm. and cell therapies and CAR yes. T cells. And while it all seems a long way away and expensive and complicated, we'll figure out a way because that's the moonshot, right? Absolutely. To, to know, break down barriers. Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. I know with the moonshot, there are a couple of vaccines already in phase two trials, exactly. et cetera. So excited to see what that data shows. And I really want to thank you for joining us today and giving us your expertise and your opinion and comments on some of the important data presented today. And thank you to our viewers for watching today. Please feel free to share this information with your colleagues and uh, friends. We want to make sure that, again, we increase the spirit of collaboration and improve the health of our nation through that collaboration and strong science. Thank you.